for over 400 years. The armies of Kairos the Overlord have swept across the known world. All who stood against them fell before their might. Even the Archons, women and men of immense power, were forced to kneel, chained to the Overlord's will. Now Kairos's final conquest has come to our corner of the world, and two of the Overlord's armies compete for the honor of taking our lands. The elite disfavored, and the teeming horde of the Scarlet Chorus. The voices of Narad, spymaster and archon of secrets, guides the fierce and undisciplined masses of the Scarlet Chorus. With each battle, the Scarlet Chorus grows stronger as the defeated are given a simple choice. Serve or die. Grave and Ash, Archon of War and the Overlord's most loyal general, leads the disfavored. Though small in number, Kairos's ironclad legion has never met true defeat in open battle. Watching over the two generals is Tunan, the Adjudicator. Archon of Justice, eldest of Kairos's minions. Tunan brings Kairos's laws to newly conquered lands, aided by the fate binders, judges and executioners of the Overlord's laws. You were among the youngest of the court of fate binders when Kairos's armies came to our lands. How could we have known that the fate of thousands would rest in your hands? All the world has fallen to Kairos, and now the Overlord's eye is on the Tears, our home, the last corner of the world free of Kairos's reign. Two armies, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, march south from the Northern Empire, the last realm to fall to Kairos a century prior. In the early days of 428, Kairos' armies arrive at the Gates of Judgment, the mountainous border that we Tearsmen so long believed unassailable. Unable to agree on a unified plan of defense, the various leaders of the Tears sit and wait for each other to deal with the conquerors. Until it's too late.
The year is 431, and Kairos' invasion has shattered all major opposition in the tiers. The Younger Realms, the Bastard Tier, the Free Cities. All who defied Kairos lay broken by battle, or bowed in surrender. The two armies of the Overlord, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, now control our lands. But our will is not yet extinguished. Not entirely. In the Valley of Vendrian's Well, those of us unwilling to bow to Kairos have banded together in defiance. Violating an oath of surrender from two years prior, we have staged a bloody uprising, murdering the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus garrison in a midnight assault. With their main forces spread across the tiers, the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus redeploy to Vendrian's Well to crush the resistance, but months pass with no definitive battle. As disagreement and discord paralyze the Archons, we bide our time and wait for our message of insurrection to spread across the tiers. The Overlord is not amused, and Kairos has one message for the Archons. Crush the Oathbreakers or die. Kairos backs this threat with an edict, a magical commandment that can slay all in the valley should the order be ignored. The honor of proclaiming this edict fell to you. Sent across the mountains to Vendrian's Well, you carry the Overlord's edict to read before the Archons. As you finally make your way through the winding mountain passes into the valley, the ground trembles and Kairos's magic seals the way behind you. You are trapped in Vendrian's Well, with Kairos's armies and the Oathbreakers. The only way to survive is to fulfill the terms of the Overlord's Edict, in any way that you can. do that. That wasn't so hard.
on it. I got it. Can't do that. Try and catch me, worm. Ah, fate finder. You're here at last. Care to join me in putting these cowards out of their misery? you didn't spend the conquest in a diplomat's tent. I'm verse, by the way. But there are more important things to take care of than introductions. Those Vendrian guard we killed didn't come alone. The voices of Narat told me to intercept you at Edgering Ruins before you busied yourself solving all of the camp's problems. <sighs> Guess I was too late. You're due for a meeting with the Archons, but we should handle the small matter of this ambush first. <sighs> My guess? The Vendrian Guard are testing our strength in battle, learning how we perform before they organize a real offensive. That or they're really, really desperate to get beyond the mountains and couldn't wait until nightfall. A Scarlet Fury, one of the elite killers of our ignoble gang. You'll see more than a few of us around camp, but don't let that fool you. We're a rare breed. Most of the soldiers in the Scarlet Chorus are little more than farmers and children armed with rusted forks. Makes them easier to control. The voices of Narat called his best fighters to this siege. There must be something important about Vendrian's well, though don't ask me what. The Archon isn't in the habit of spilling secrets. Eager! <laughs> I like that. Before we go, you might search among the remains of our fallen comrades. Wherever they're bound, I doubt they'll miss their boots, much less any rings or any useful iron they might be clutching. No reason to pity the fallen. Before long, we might wish we'd joined him here. But at least we'll enjoy heavy pockets and warm toes. For the voices of Narat! Will do. Sorry, I can't. You should loot some of these bodies before moving on. Where they're going, I don't think they'll miss their gear. We'll talk when this is over. Got it.
Look at... Can't do that. See that?
Sorry, I can't. Sorry, I can't. Need to talk? I suppose I can give you a moment of my time. What do you need? If you insist, I'm a Scarlet Fury. That should raise some flags for you. It means that I'm good at killing, and more importantly, that I enjoy it. 
What I won't enjoy are the pleasures of funerary rites packed with weeping mourners. Someday I'll fall in battle, and then they'll roll me into a mass grave or heap me atop a shit-stained wagon. One more anonymous, knife-riddled piece of meat. Until then, I plan to take whatever I can from life and have a little fun along the way. The Scarlet Chorus is mostly for madmen and peasants with rusty daggers, but it's also a little niche of freedom that I never had. Once I survived training and met my Scarlet Fury sisters, I saw a different side of the howling mob. For new recruits shoved to the front lines, training means surviving the first battle. Anything beyond that is for the fighters who show potential, whether as blade dancers or arcane madmen. There's nothing in the world like getting put through the paces as a Scarlet Fury. Every day is a test of your commitment and passion. Failure means death. The first few weeks were the hardest, but also the most rewarding. I earned my name, picked up some quality weapons, and met my sisters. The Elite Fighters of the Scarlet Chorus. Your typical Horde recruit fights with a rusty spoon and a chip on his shoulder, but... The Scarlet Furies are, well, different. We focus our madness. We coordinate, we kill, we dance. It's like art. Imagine a sculpture that twisted in weird, beautiful angles, and then gutted you too fast for you to realize what was happening. It is, as I remind myself all the time, the most important day of my life was when the voices of Narat recognized my potential and sent me to Scarlet Fury training. What do you need to know?
What do you need to know? For new recruits shoved to the front lines, training means surviving the first battle. Anything beyond that is for the fighter. What do you need to know? What do you need to know? Do you now? Call me intrigued. You already know that I memorize the moves of my Scarlet Fury sisters. If it seems like a total mystery to me, I don't know how you could have arrived at any conclusions, but I'm open to ideas. If you want to split hairs over it, you could argue that I took their instincts, their reactions, but I failed to see- Wait. Are you trying to compare me to the voices of Narat? The voices of Narat is a monster. We both know that Teratus has never seen a creature more despicable than him. Never mind that he's kind of my boss. My little talent that latches onto my friends and bleeds them dry, you mean? Because I never asked for it. I've traveled with the chorus for years. I've seen what the voices can do, and it scares me, all right? The idea that everything I am could be reduced to... to that. If I had that kind of power, if I could become like him, I don't know how I could live with myself. I'd rather drown myself in a camp latrine. I'm sure he had the same idea when he got started. But you know what they say about power? It's usually wielded by assholes. My sisters died. Oh, you should have seen us. We were amazing together. I didn't mean to take away what made them special, but I did it all the same. And let me tell you, it felt terrible. If I lived a century, I might never figure out how to make that happen again. And more importantly, I don't want to. If you insist, what I won't enjoy are the pleasure.
That would be an understatement, and I thought you'd never ask. Since you're obviously at a huge disadvantage, I'll let you pick our weapon of choice. If you want to risk becoming a pincushion, it's your funeral. But you're right about one thing. This will be fun. <sighs> you held your own. Call me impressed. Need anything else, or did I tire you out? At your service, Fatebinder. What do you need? Can't do that.
Sorry, I can't. Can't do that. Good thing I keep a torsion wrench handy.
Can't do that. Sorry, I can't. Ah, got it. Sorry, I can't. Why'd you take a look at that? Can't do that. That's four reports of avalanches in the mountains now. The Tearsmen can barely count past nine. They have neither the capacity nor the cause to close off the mountain passes. Either way, that leaves the second and fourth cohort trapped outside the valley. Or it's the work of your perfidious Earthshakers. Only a fool would not suspect a traitorous Archon of poisoning the mind of his students with sedition. We would have killed the Earthshakers Guild for their master's treachery, but I'm sure you have some perfectly valid reason for allowing them to live as your pawns. Hey, watch yourself. When these two get going, you don't want to get between them. I always know you've run out of things to say when you resort to mocking my vassals. If we are to speak of treachery, why is it that my scouts see the Scarlet Chorus warriors defecting back to the Vendrian Guard? Your fearsome reputation has gone flaccid, for it seems you cannot control your soldiers, or perhaps you simply choose not to. Speaking of strategic failures, who was it that insisted the Valley would need only a token garrison? Hmm? For some strange reason, we can't seem to recall which balding half would grossly underestimated the enemy. Thoughts? And I thought you had left agents within these tearsmen when they surrendered. Either you failed to see this coming, or you knew and let it happen. Incompetent or in cahoots, either way, this mess has your filthy stink all over it. We look forward to seeing you explain to Tunan why the Archon of War could not close the vice on this trivial little insurgency. When we are crowned the ruler of the tears, we shall have this place renamed to Ashes Folly in your honor. If I could trust the information I get from you and your conscripted mouth breathers, perhaps I'd order my cohorts around a bit more aggressively. But last time I trusted your all-clear report, my troops failed to come home. Oh, Ash, old boy. If you're going to have a little sob every time one of your nieces or nephews dies to the Tearsmen, perhaps we should have Siren sing you some calming lullabies to help you cope with your grief.
How wonderful you could join us, Quakebringer, Executioner of Cairn. You grace us with your presence. He is hoping you have another edict for bringing childish archons to heal. My soldiers tell me you helped Commander Drottus on your way through Edring. You honor the court with your selfless cooperation, for that is the sort of camaraderie that Kairos demands of us all. Modesty is your prerogative, but know that cooperation and goodwill have been rarities of late. You do your Lord Tunon a great honor by aiding your cousins in the disfavored. No, oh, don't mind us while you trade your gushing praise. We're sure the Fatebinder has come because our company lacks in small talk. For the second time, Brother Tunon selects you for the glory of proclamation. You should be honored. Tell us, what has the Overlord decided to unleash upon the Oathbreakers? The Overlord means to compel us into action. No doubt the avalanches in the mountains are part of this ultimatum. We must conquer the Oathbreakers or die in failure. There is no room for error, and no other way out of this valley alive. We'll need to advance across the Matani. We lose everything if we stand still. And we move to back up Plan Green. The Earthshakers didn't make it over the mountain in time. So we do this the hard way. Over the walls, instead of through. So, you found your backbone at last! <laughs> oh, we were worried past humiliations would make you soft, timid. That was a record for you, right? The Baker's Dozen lost in one sortie. If you had waited for the Chorus reinforcements, maybe we'd have eyes and ears on the matter. You make it sound like you've been putting even the slightest effort into getting a foothold across the Matani, when all you've done is set your gangs to uncoordinated raids. You're the Archon of Secrets. Why is it you still don't know the enemy's full strength and capabilities? Maybe you know, and choose not to share. Look, if you're afraid to send more troops against the Oathbreakers, just admit that you're a coward, and allow us to take charge of the situation. I tire of your incessant heckling. The disfavored have shouldered the brunt of this war, and I will not have you mock our sacrifices. Our soldiers clamor for battle, and at last we shall have it. Verse, we command you to continue guarding the Fatebinder. Tunan's Chosen is our honored guest and must be shown our finest hospitality. I won't let you down, boss. She'll get through the campaign in one piece, as long as she doesn't do anything too stupid. Finally. The fool and his puppet are gone. Perhaps now I can hear myself think. Rarely do I question Kairos' judgment, but I will never understand why the voices of Narat is given such authority. I shudder to think what will become of us all should Tunon favor him in the end. Though the Edict threatens the Scarlet Chorus just as it threatens us, I cannot shake the feeling that our allies will work against us. You've shown your worth in war. And your name has been known to the Legion since the very beginning of this long conquest. So I'd ask that you join us this one last time, to help us wrap up this last objective. If you wish to be counted amongst the Glorious, speak with the Iron Marshal. She will direct the order of battle until we are ready for the final push into the Citadel. I ask myself that question often. While we take the river crossing, the Scarlet Chorus should be using their sizable presence to remove the Oathbreaker patrols lurking in the outer valley.
Fatebinder, the Iron Marshal has tasked me with keeping you alive, and I have no intention of disappointing her. That should be enough assurance for anyone. Likewise, good binder. Beric, is that you under there? I had no idea you were in Vendrian's well. Fatebinder, do you know this walking anchor? No. Oh, that is to say, yes. I'm already as familiar with this ironclad halfwit as I care to be. We don't have time to trade jabs today, Verse. After the siege, you can throw as many tantrums as you please. I suggest that we remain focused on the mission. No offense to the mission, but seeing you looking like a garbage heap and reeking of a mass grave is more amusing by far. Did you forget how to don your armor, or did Grave and Ash leave you out in the rain? It's challenging enough to experience battle from a courtroom, much less remember the faces of your cohorts. I wouldn't expect you to know me under these accursed blades of rust. Better to work with the Honorable Binder than some chorus children. Right.
You look as if you have something on your mind. By all means, what can I do for you? It is a symbol of Kairos's will, one that I am not likely to forget. I found this armor. Perhaps it would be better to say that it found me during the Edict of Storms.
Good. Let's move on to another matter. Go on, Fatebinder. My Lord Binder, you have something which requires my attention? What can I do for you? Though we are encouraged to couple and mate within the Legion, I don't consider you one of my cohorts. I think I'll decline. You weren't? Uh, forgive me, it's been some time since anyone made an advance. I am long out of practice, as you can see. Suffice it to say, my armor and I will not be separated for the time being. When the war is over, perhaps Tunon will lend me one of his forge bound. Until then, here I remain. My armor saved me from the destruction of Stalwart, where thousands of others lost their lives. So you can see why I continue to wear it. For the time being, we will not be separated. That's far enough, Fatebinder. In accordance with ancient customs north and south, I offer and request a delay of blade. There are matters we must discuss without fear of reprisal. As is our custom, we are ready to kill to defend our lands, but we kill only in fair battle. We don't slay our prisoners. We know this isn't Kairos's way, but we must have hope. A few of my kin have gone missing, and though they may have perished, I have to inquire on the off chance they still live. If Captain Tarkas Deimos still lives, we would negotiate for his release. We would offer you five choirmen that got lost on patrol. They're healthy, 
Got other limbs, too. I would not have us barter with Oathbreakers. Certainly not for anything less than disfavored lives. You say there's something worth less than a disfavored life. Call me intrigued. Then if we see him again, it will have to be as enemies. If I may make one more inquiry, what of Palox Tyrell? Did he survive? My apologies, Fatebinder. I had a terrible feeling this errand was in vain from the start. I had no expectations that our friends could be saved, as I'm sure the time for swapping prisoners is long gone. But at least I know of what became of them. That'll have to be enough. Then all that remains is for me to thank you for hearing me out. In accordance with our ancient customs north and south, let us part with peaceful accord. I got it. Can't do that. Sorry, I can't.
Interesting. Good thing I keep a torsion wrench handy. Sorry, I can't. Can't do that. That wasn't so hard. Can't do that.
Uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, but I highly doubt it's gibberish. Uh, more likely, it's one of the local scripts. Uh, I'm Sage Lantry, one of the hired quills that... Uh, well, uh, let me see. Uh, I, I, I can't... Uh, uh, oh, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, so, uh, I don't know exactly what it says, but I'm half certain that's Sage Selwyn's handwriting. I'm sure I could decipher that in a few hours' time. Uh, don't need my hands free, but uh, I think better when not tied to a post. <laughs> I know, I, I'm weird that way. Fatebinder, I beseech you, be my advocate for this trial. I'm no fool, I know the Chorus uses blood, not words, to settle these matters. But you are a servant of the Archon of Justice, are you not? Good. I like it when Tunon's puppies get their paws dirty. I wouldn't mind taking a swing at some loudmouth chorus braggarts myself. I am a shield wall unto myself! Fell before me! 